Christ is risen. Together we say, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let's pray as we begin our service this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the joyful message that Jesus is alive today. And we pray that this morning you would help us to praise him with everything we have, heart, mind, soul and strength. Help us as we feed on Jesus in our hearts by faith uh, to know the strengthening power of his resurrection and to know the hope that we are called to in him. Thank you that death could not contain Jesus and that he is alive today. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome to this service of celebration on Easter Sunday as we enjoy together the message that Jesus is alive. Throughout these times of social distancing, we as a church are broadcasting our services over the internet. Uh, so there's an opportunity for us to gather together around these common truths, even though we're apart for a time. And so this morning there's going to be songs, as we've had already, uh, prayers, as we've had already, and a chance to look at God's Word, the Bible, and think about what it has to teach us about the risen Lord Jesus. So whether you are a seasoned regular at Bush Hill Park Community Church, or, or you've just a curious visitor who's found us this morning through the internet, you are very welcome to join with us this morning as we share this special moment. We remember that 2,000 years ago, in a tomb in Jerusalem, uh, there was no one found. Uh, that, that a man who had been crucified as a common criminal uh, and, uh, and appeared to scores of his followers who saw that he was alive again. It is a moment which changed the world forever. Things would never be the same again after Jesus rose from the dead. Now, as Christians, that belief in the resurrection is a core truth for us. It's one of the most important fundamental things we believe. But somehow there are still Christians today, or people who claim to be Christians, who, who say, no, nah, it doesn't really matter if the resurrection was real or not. If it didn't happen, well, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that we believe. I want to tell you this morning, that is a load of rubbish. If the resurrection of Jesus didn't happen, I would not be a Christian this morning. And I certainly wouldn't be a pastor of a church. No, it matters that this event in history happened. Listen to what the Apostle Paul has to say in 1 Corinthians 15. But if, is, if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there's no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. More than that, we are found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. No life, no forgiveness, no point to our faith if Jesus did not rise. You see, the power of Jesus' resurrection is life-changing. It, it shows us that Jesus has defeated every enemy who would stand against us as believers. Jesus is lifted up to the place of greatest honour and glory in all the universe. And there is nothing that is greater than he is. If death can't hold Jesus, then death can't hold those who belong to Jesus. That is our great hope this resurrection morning. If we belong to Jesus, if we have turned to him as our king and put him first in our lives, the resurrection is a message for us. Friends, let's enjoy the hope that the resurrection gives us this morning, the secure life in Christ we have. As we sing the words of this next song, crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon his throne. Strong, hark how the heavenly 
be glorified an angel in the sky can fully bear that sight but downward bends each burning eye at mystery so bright morning comes from John's Gospel and we're continuing our series in words we all want to hear uh, by looking at the resurrection of Jesus from John chapter 20 starting at verse 19. If you've got a Bible alongside it you'll find it helpful to follow along and to check that the words I'm saying come from God's Word. Uh, so perhaps take a moment to pause or look around for a Bible uh, and I'll read out now the passage that we're looking at this morning. John chapter 20 starting at verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. As we continue to think about the words of Scripture, we're going to watch a video now which summarises for us the Easter story of Jesus' sacrifice. Stories of the Bible Jesus' Sacrifice This is Jesus hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! The Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the Son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus Come in, come in. And give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying, and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. 
Jesus was presented before the high council and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the son of God. You say that I am. And the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seems okay to me. They found him to be innocent. So Pilate said that he would punish Jesus and then release him. What? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on, his clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own, and then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, if you really are the son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, this man truly was the son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! Don't be afraid, said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day and ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? hey -oh. ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. I want to ask you this morning, are you a warrior? Are you the kind of person who, when you've locked the front door or the car door, you have to go back and check whether you really have done it or not? I always find myself having to, to lock the car again just to make sure, because I'm thinking, oh, what if I haven't done it? Or perhaps you're different. Uh, you worry about different things. You worry about what other people are going to think about you. And so every decision you make in your life, you're always thinking, what if people don't like what I've done? What if people don't like the decision I've made? Maybe you're not those kind of people at all. You're someone different again. You're, perhaps you're the kind of person who worries about things that haven't even happened yet. And so you find yourself paralysed when it comes to making decisions. You can't choose because you don't want to get it wrong. 
whether that's the wrong school or the wrong job or the wrong decision about your future. You're always asking, what if I make the wrong choice? Well, do you know what? If you ever find yourself feeling like that, then you're in some good company, I reckon. Uh, because uh, uh, we saw on Good Friday that Jesus had spoken words we all want to hear. On the cross, he cried out, it is finished. Uh, and we looked at what that meant on Good Friday. As Jesus died, his work was complete. He brought an end to suffering and death. He did all that was needed to complete God's rescue plan. Now, you would expect that after Jesus had managed to do all of that, that his disciples would be partying and, and celebrating the fact that it is finished. That Jesus' mission was accomplished, that they'd be full of joy. But instead, they go into hiding. They look pretty worried. I wonder what kind of questions they had. What if it didn't work? After all, Jesus is dead now. How can we actually be sure that he was successful in defeating sin and death? What if the Jewish leaders get hold of us and try and kill us next? We could end up just like Jesus unless we keep a low profile. What if we made the wrong decision to give up everything and follow Jesus? What do we do now? What if it did work? What if Jesus is alive, but now... He's angry with us because we abandoned him in his hour of need. Would he take us back after we failed him so badly? Well, the risen Lord Jesus has to say to them, answers every single one of their what-if questions. And as we look again at the words of Jesus in John's Gospel, we are going to discover that he is speaking not just to them, but directly to us as well. He, he speaks to our worries, and he has words we all want to hear. Before we do that, we're going to sing a song of celebration and joy that Jesus has risen. Together we'll sing, Jesus, Jesus is alive. Jesus, Jesus is alive. Risen three days after he was crucified, Jesus died to set us free and rose again so we could have new life. And we will sing to the Savior, we will celebrate the King, for the Savior is Jesus who has paid for all our sin. We will sing that he rose again till everyone has heard And we're living for Jesus till the day that he returns Jesus, Jesus is alive Risen and ascended to the Father's side Jesus, he will come again Forevermore, and we will sing to the Savior, we will celebrate the King. For the Savior is Jesus, who has paid for all our sin. We will sing that He rose again till everyone has heard, and we're living for Jesus till the day that He returns. And we will sing to the Saviour, we will celebrate the King. For the Saviour is Jesus, who has paid for all our sin. We will sing that He rose again till everyone has heard. And we're living for Jesus till the day that He returns. Yes, we're living for Jesus till the day that He returns.
As we come to look at the Bible now, let's pray and ask for God's help. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word, the Bible. Thank you that it shows us amazing things that you have done for us. We pray that you would open our eyes to the wonders in your word this Easter. Amen. That story of Easter is such a familiar one to us, isn't it? It's one we hear year after year after year. And there's a real risk that we perhaps uh, scoot over some of the details. Uh, things that we think we've heard a million times before, we, we don't notice every single detail. But perhaps as we come to the story this morning, we're going to see it again in a fresh way because of the circumstances we're living in. Uh, take, for example, the start of verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews. The disciples have gone into self-isolation, haven't they? Alone in the house, it's just them, and the doors are locked, and they're not allowed to go out, and no one else is allowed to come in, because they're scared of what's out there and what might happen to them. All they can do is just sit there and wait. No one comes in, no one goes out. All they're doing is thinking about the what-ifs. And no one has to see, seems to have any clear steps about what's going to happen next. Either Jesus is alive, as Mary Magdalene has just told them, verse 18. Mary went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Either Jesus is alive, in which case well, possibly they've blown it by disowning him. Or Jesus really is dead, in which case then they probably think they've wasted their lives following him. And the Jews are coming to kill them next. They're scared of them, aren't they? It must have been a pretty depressing lockdown for the first disciples. But then as we read, two things happen which completely change everything. Here's the first. Jesus came and stood among them. Verse 19, Jesus came and stood among them. A, a man who just hours beforehand had been pronounced dead by an expert execution squad. A, a man who just hours before had had his body prepared and wrapped in cloths and placed inside a tomb which was sealed with a heavy stone. Now he was with them in front of them, in a room that was locked to prevent people from entering. This was no hallucination. This was no wishful thinking on the part of the disciples, as despondent as they were. Jesus really was there, alive with them. Now, perhaps somebody's sitting there thinking, oh, well, maybe it was just a ghost. After all, uh, human bodies, flesh and blood, they don't go through locked doors, do they? But look again, it's clear that that is not the case. Look at verse 20. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. This is a flesh and blood human being who had been killed and placed in that tomb. He still bore the marks of his death. He may have been different, but he was definitely the same person. It must have been a moment of great shock. An amazement for the disciples, mustn't it? And yet, if they'd been listening to Jesus beforehand, well, then they would have known that this moment was coming. Back in the upper room, before Jesus' death, he had said these words to them. Uh, this is John chapter 16, verse 16. He says this, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. Jesus had told them he was going away and that he would come back. Or by the grave of Lazarus, when Jesus had said, I am the resurrection and the life. John 11, verse 25. Of course, it's easy for us to stand here with the benefit of hindsight and look back and say, of course Jesus was alive, going to be alive. Of course the signs were there. But we are talking here about the ultimate in unbelievable events taking place. Everyone knows that dead people don't come back to life again. Sure, you can revive someone or, or, or restore, resuscitate them after a few minutes. But 
People don't come back to life after days in a tomb, do they? This is why the resurrection of Jesus is such a game changer for us. Because it turns everything we think we know about life and death upside down, on its head. It's an event which challenges all the rules we think we know about how life and death works in this universe. All the rules we've got about what happens, well, they're thrown up by this event, aren't they? We are left with two options. On the one hand, we can say, well, we know that miracles aren't possible, uh, so the resurrection of Jesus can't have happened. Or we can say, hang on a minute, here is an event which operates outside of what we understand the rules of life and death. Perhaps we need to change our understanding of life and death to account for this new evidence. You see, people say that belief in the resurrection is an unreasonable thing to hold in this day and age. But I want to say the opposite. That to not account for the resurrection of Jesus is to ignore the evidence, to not take it seriously. But the living, breathing appearance of Jesus alone isn't enough to calm their fears. What if Jesus has appeared among them in judgment? What if he's come against them because they abandoned him? That would be a reason to be full of fear. Look again at what Jesus says. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Here's the second thing which changes everything. Jesus said, Peace be with you. All their fears about how Jesus might approach them following their denial of him are immediately diffused in just a few words. The author, J.C. Ryle, and the minister uh, puts it like this. It's a wonderful moment he captures. Peace and not blame. Peace and not fault finding. Peace and not rebuke. It was the first word that this little company heard from their master's lips after he left the tomb. Jesus' greeting alone to them is enough to reassure them that their relationship with him is fully restored. Yes, they are still his deeply loved friends. There is peace and not hostility when Jesus returns to them. And yet again, we're able to look back with the benefit of hindsight and see this is exactly what the disciples should have expected from Jesus. As they were troubled in that upper room just before Jesus' death, he spoke these words to them. John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, says Jesus. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Or again, chapter 16, and verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. It's important for us to recognise, Jesus speaks here of peace as much more than just the end of hostility. Uh, peace also means an inner calm, a, a release from strife and a blessed life. In short, when Jesus says peace, he is announcing the end to all of their fears, all of their what-ifs. Fears about Jesus going away and dying. Fears about what the Jewish leaders would do to them. Yes, says Jesus, you might face trouble in this world, but I have overcome the world. You have the promised gift of peace. But there is something more about this moment, which sets it apart from all the other times that people had uttered the word peace as a greeting as people often did in those times. Jesus was also greeting his disciples peace with God. This was a peace that was something only he could give. Jesus alone was the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, John chapter 1. Jesus alone was the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him, John chapter 14. Jesus alone who cried, it is finished, John chapter 19. 
the death of Jesus was to take away sins. So that there would be no barrier between a person and God anymore. Sin, our rebellion against God, our offences against him, those are the things that prevent us living at peace with him, with each other and with the world that we live in. And Jesus comes and he removes that barrier. He breaks down the wall that divides us. It's this peace which Jesus commissions his disciples to go and share with the world. Did you see that? Verse 21. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus gives his peace. Jesus gives his Holy Spirit so that he can come and be among his people, regardless of the fact that he's gone to heaven. Jesus gives forgiveness of sins. When you think about your worries and your anxieties, all the what-if questions that are flying around in your head right now, don't you long for peace? Don't you long for, for some tranquility and calm instead of the uncertainty and turmoil within? Where relationships are broken, where there's inner conflict, where there's anxiety about matters of life and death, where you're aware of your spiritual failings and mistakes. Don't you want someone to tell you that those fears can be at an end? That they don't need to hassle you anymore. All of us long for the peace that Jesus describes here. All of us long to be rid of those fears and anxieties. But it's not enough to hear the word peace. We have to know the one, that the one who is offering us peace really can give it to us. It is only Jesus who fits the bill. He's the only one who can actually give us what we all are longing to hear. The risen Lord Jesus comes among us today and he offers us that same peace now. If you consider the evidence that John presents for us in his gospel and you reach the conclusion that yes, Jesus is God's king. Yes, he did come to die for my sins. Yes, he does offer me peace with God. Well, then you can have that peace today. You can be saved from sin. You can be given new life and the hope of the resurrection which Jesus brings. And like the disciples who witnessed the risen Lord Jesus on that first Easter Sunday, the result will be the same. Look at what happens, verse 19. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After that, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And like the disciples of Jesus who witnessed that first Easter Sunday and his resurrection, we too can have the joy of the hope of the resurrection and his peace, just as he promised. John chapter 16 and verse 20. I tell you the truth, Jesus says, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. As we come to this Easter Sunday, we can have joy because Jesus is alive. He is with us and he gives us peace. Let's express that joy in the resurrection now as we sing our next song. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds 
his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb, the entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forever. Son of heaven rose again. Oh, tremble death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the of why the blazing sun shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face Oh praise the Having heard the words of the risen Lord Jesus, peace be with you. Let's come now to court in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the incredible good news of the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. That though he humbled himself to death, you raised him to life and seated him in the place of greatest honour. We praise you that it was your good plan uh, to give your only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. May our lives be transformed by the knowledge of that hope, so that we are filled with over, uh, overcome with joy, and live every moment for your praise and glory. Lord, we bring before you this morning our fears and our anxieties. Situations where we struggle to know what is best, actions where we fear we've messed up, relationships we are sure have been broken. 
where our hearts are in turmoil. Help us to know the peace that the resurrected Jesus alone offers. Where our consciences accuse us and we are racked with guilt, help us come to the risen Lord Jesus for the assurance of forgiveness and access to that restored relationship with you. And Father, we pray especially for those whose lives are darkened by the pain of the current situation. Those who need the light of the resurrection to shine into their lives. May the words of Jesus be a comfort in their sorrow and hope in their despair. We pray that you would open their eyes and their hearts to the peace that can be theirs through Jesus. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. That's almost the end of our Easter Sunday service this morning. Uh, but before we sing our final song, I just want to remind you that throughout this time of lockdown, we're going to be broadcasting our, our Sunday services at 10 o'clock on YouTube. And obviously after that, you can watch them again. And you'd be very welcome to join us each Sunday at 10 o'clock. But more than that, if this morning the message of the resurrection has challenged you to think more deeply about the life of Jesus and who he is and what he's done, then we'd love to help you think about it more. We run something called Christianity Explored, uh, where we give people the chance to read through Mark's Gospel and find out more about the story of Jesus for themselves, who he was, what he said he came to do. We'd love to give you the opportunity to do that online. And so if you'd like to do that, please do get in touch with us uh, and we'd love to tell you more. We're going to conclude our service now by singing our final song, When Peace Like a River. like a river attend of my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well
fall.